Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Steve Harper. I'm the Executive Director uh, for International Business at Invest Northern Ireland. And today we uh, are going to have a, a bit of a virtual round table um, with some of the titans of the financial and professional services sector in Northern Ireland. Um, as you know, Northern Ireland's financial and professional services sector has experienced quite a remarkable resilience uh, through the pandemic crisis. And via this round table, we're really looking to explore the market qualities investing financial and professional services companies look for and to discuss the elements that a business should build into its resilience. So today I'm really delighted to be joined by Brian McAreevy, who is the Managing Director of PwC Operate, Darren McCarthy, who is the CEO of Fintrue, Keith Farley, who is the Managing Director and Vice President of AFLAC, and John, John Healy, Vice President and Managing Director of Allstate Northern Ireland, and James Richards, who is Executive Director at Baker McKenzie. So, uh, gentlemen, you're very welcome. Thank you for uh, taking the time to join us um, this afternoon. Um, I guess my first question really is to Brian, um, and it's really to understand what has been PwC's experience as a financial services and uh, business operating in Northern Ireland during COVID-19. Steve, I guess there's, there's two sides to the response to that question, uh, demand and supply. And if I maybe start with supply, first of all, uh, I think all of us on short notice sent our staff home to work from home um, and we missed not a beat. So we found that staff were able to adapt to home working very quickly. The technology infrastructure was in place and well tested. Uh, and what we found very quickly was that staff settled into a routine. Uh, we were able to monitor productivity uh, and productivity was unchanged. If anything, it was improved. We were able to monitor quality, and quality was unchanged. If anything, it improved. Uh, and certainly, staff satisfaction and engagement, a lot of effort was put into that, and staff were clearly more comfortable working from home, clearly for a period they had to, than take the risk in, in inverted commas of having to come into the office and use public transport and so on. So that part of the equation worked very well, uh, but we were fairly comfortable that it would work well because we had tested the various scenarios in advance. The bit from our perspective that we weren't sure about was what about the demand side? Uh, we had a, a fairly busy pipeline of work, but could we continue to restock that pipeline? Uh, and what we have found is actually we, we have. Uh, we've never been busier. Um, clients will engage virtually. We were able to get involved in virtual pitches for work um, and close contracts uh, virtually. Uh, clients are able to work in the same way that, that we are able to work. Um, so, so that bit has gone very well. And in addition, the market discontinuities around COVID and Brexit have in and of themselves brought additional opportunities onto the table that certainly we had never envisaged. Uh, so actually, there's been new market opportunities that have helped grow our business faster, we think, than it otherwise would have grown. And Brian, you mentioned there, obviously, that you had tested the systems in, in advance of, a, of um, well, probably not in advance of a pandemic. You maybe didn't see that coming down the line, but but what um, in what way had you done that? Uh, well, before we required, I think we sent all our staff home uh, about a week before it was required because we could see what was coming and there's no point uh, delaying the action. But in, in advance of that, from January, actually, we knew that, that the pandemic was building from Asia. Uh, we had some feeling of what the impact might be, although clearly I think what actually happened was a surprise to all of us. Uh, so during February, we had divided our staff into red and blue teams. Uh, and we had practiced sending one team to work from home for a few days, the other team would be in the office and then we would swap it around. Uh, and while all our staff are, as I'm sure staff from all the organizations represented in this call, uh, we've got technology that, that, that they can work from home and that had been tested obviously repeatedly. What hadn't been tested was whole teams, you know, supervision, checking quality of work. How would that work when you had a whole team working remotely as opposed to one or two individuals on that team that happened to be working remotely for whatever reason on that particular day. So that's a bit that we were looking to test. Uh, and also as the pandemic became more severe, uh, it also gave us a, a circuit breaker in that if, if somebody from the red team 
got COVID at that stage, to be honest, nobody was sure whether that meant the whole office had to close or a floor had to close or a project room had to close. Uh, it just meant we all was at 50% of our staff working from home so that if we did have an outbreak of COVID, not everybody would be affected and we could try and contain it somewhat. Uh, but all of that worked well and it was robustly tested before it actually needed to be implemented. That's super, thank you, Brian. John, I guess, um, quick question for you that, um, you know, same question, if you don't mind, you know, you're one of the biggest employers here in, in Belfast. Um, had you any learnings that, that came through, I guess, the early days of the pandemic when it was all going a bit mad? Well, you know, it, it, I think whenever you say it was all going a bit mad, you're not too far off the mark, you know, because it really was unprecedented times, you know, like uh, the guys at PwC operate, we would have practiced our, our plans and we would have tabletop them, uh, but to actually put it into action is, is something completely different. Uh, I was hugely impressed by how our employees all responded. Uh, there's two and a half thousand of us here in Northern Ireland and we were able to get everybody home safely working uh, over, a, over a weekend. You know, we sent out a, an emergency notice uh, on our notification system to say that we were going to start and evoke the working from home uh, and the, the, the teams were just absolutely fantastic. The other dimension that, that we got to see from here in Northern Ireland because of the technology services that we provide back to uh, the corporation in the in the US to uh, Allstate itself uh, was uh, to see how we were able to help from here in Northern Ireland uh, the teams in a global basis uh, to be able to get their technology set up and to be able for the global teams to be able to function uh, as well uh, and it's really quite remarkable to think that from here in Northern Ireland that we were delivering that service uh, that we were so uh, robust so resilient in terms of our own level uh, of service provision that we were able to help the rest of the, the organization uh, from here. Like many, uh, we also were seeing uh, very strong levels of productivity uh, from uh, our teams as they, as they work from home, but also we're seeing that we're having to work much harder as an organization in terms of maintaining the, the levels of team cohesion, uh, making sure that we're engaging with our employees and maintaining that culture uh, that is our, our corporate uh, culture uh, and to be able to maintain that connection with the employees while they, they work from home. And that's probably been the biggest learning for us as a company as to how to maintain that level of engagement with two and a half thousand people while they're out of the office. Thank you. Thank you. James, quick uh, question to you, if you don't mind. So obviously, you know, a lot of tech businesses would, um, people would imagine that's quite easy for them to to get up and work remotely, but you know your legal services business, Baker McKenzie, huge, one of the what, the world's largest global law firm. Um, what you know, what, what sort of experiences did you have? I mean, we 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 were lucky, I think, in that because we're a relatively young business in 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 Belfast. We've been here, as you know, for just coming up for six years. Um, our business continuity plan from day one has been. Uh, working remote remotely. I mean, we, we didn't anticipate a pandemic, but uh, we were we were ready to go uh, on that basis. And we we very much um, when we opened in Belfast, we 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 did try to implement very best practice um, in in the in, in the office, and that included working on a on a paperless basis uh, from day one. So although certainly my experience of law firm offices historically and for most people is offices filled with paper and people reviewing documents, we don't really do that we don't work that way in Belfast. So we did find it was pretty easy for people to um, to, to set up at home and just, just get on with their uh, with their work. Um, I think like everybody else, I, I I was really surprised by how seamless it all was. I mean, for the, I, I, I think it was pretty obvious for about three or four weeks before we went into formal lockdown that it was coming. Um, so we were reminding everyone on a daily basis Take your laptop home. Make sure you know, test it, test it, test it. Uh, raise any issues that you have with the technology, with the with the IT team. Um, so we were, you know, we were ready to go when the uh, when the, when the trigger was pulled. Um, the um, I mean, the learnings are although I think what we've what we've seen very clearly is that we can run our core business incredibly effectively actually uh, on a remote working basis. Um, but my my worry all along has been that we do the core well. But how about the what about the creativity 
the learning, the, the, the career advancement, particularly for those at the more junior ends of their careers, how do we manage that on a remote basis? Um, and, and so, as, as John said, I mean, we, we've had to work very hard uh, to, to, to pay, to build up some credit in that kind of bank, the culture bank, uh, because I think we, we were drawing down on that quite heavily that we're, um, well, lucky, lucky in a way, but we're well prepared in having a very strong culture in the office, um, very supportive teams, everyone um, knew what they were supposed to do and who they could lean on, um, and we've relied very heavily on that. Um, it takes work to, to, to build that up again and keep building that. I mean, we've, we've, I think we've been joined by about 30 new joiners um, since we went into lockdown in March. Um, so they're people who've been um, inducted into the business, trained and have started work um, and they're doing incredibly well. Um, but there's no doubt that it's a, it's, a, it's a very different experience joining on a remote basis. And I, you know, I can't wait until we're able to actually do something in person, but you know, clearly that's, that's a way off yet. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's uh, interesting on the, on the people piece, and, and Dara, that's something I'd like to kind of pick up with you. So, so um, obviously we've had the in infrastructure here in Northern Ireland to allow people to go on, on work from home, but but how do you, you know, you've you've built your business, you know, pretty fast over the last number of years, and you've you know a large number of team members. How how have you brought that culture along in that remote sense? So I think it's it's um, look it's picking up on everything that Brian, John, and James already referred to. It, it's it's um, how do you how do you virtually recreate everything you were trying to do um, in the office before and 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 um, working from home you know has pros and has cons uh, without question. I think there there I think all the organisations on this call will acknowledge that employees seem happier, productivity seems the same if not slightly better, absenteeism isn't there you know there's no er issues so everyone seems relatively happy working from home people don't have commutes um but but there's no there's no water cooler chat there's no making a coffee and you know having a chat with someone and seeing how they got on there's no just just seeing how people are feeling and and um look we've hired an awful lot of people in 2020 remotely we've run virtual academies and we're starting into a year-end cycle uh, where managers have never met members of their team which is something that uh, you know, it's just something we have to acknowledge, and that's a new world uh, we live in. Um, we work incredibly hard um, at Fintru about trying to preserve this culture. So, so we have run so many initiatives since the start of lockdown, everything in the summer, from you know getting exercise and being healthy. We've launched major initiatives coming into the darker, colder winter months about mental health and sleeping well and and eating well, and and because you know the you know the, the weather isn't going to be great and 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 I think people now realize that this is going to go on a lot longer. So, so how do you how do you virtually or synthetically recreate that fun? Because life, you know, work is not just about you know nine to five, and people need to identify with with the organization and I want to feel want to feel part of it. Um, but it's been um, you know I think the resilience shown by by Northern Irish people to be positive um, has has shone through in, in right across the organization, um, and 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 and. Literally, I, I, you know, I just came into the office for this call, and I, and I, I have a thank you letter from one of our employees to, to thank Katrina and I for all the support we've given them through the pandemic and how they've, and how they've fared and how it's been vital to our family. And, and so we hear, we hear an awful lot of wonderful stories that people have been able to care for loved ones. They've been able to maybe look after dependents. They've been, able, they've been able to work from home. But also, I think people are, um, you know, we, we on this call are incredibly fortunate that we're in a, we're in an industry which is remarkably resilient. I don't think any of us, um, you know, could have anticipated this pandemic, what it would mean. We, you know, none of us, you know, really um, could have imagined that the transition to working from home would go so seamlessly. But, but we've all been able to continue to uh, provide our employees with the financial security and professional development, which, which they and their families long for. And, and every one of our employees is in an extended family or community, which where, where that, that good fortune is not shared equally. And, and I think we, we need to be very cognizant of the fact that um, the broader economy and community is suffering. So, so, it's, so, a, so a, a beacon, no matter how small that beacon can be of optimism in, in, these, in these throes of economic despair um, is, is very important. Um, and, and I think people, people wanna be aligned with, with something that is successful and I, look, we, we we uh, we very deliberately made a strategy not to take a single penny from from uh, the the government on any of these furloughs. And um, you know we we very clearly said we're not going to 
uh, take you know any any you know money coming from central government from furloughing or, or business interruption loans or any of that because you know someone is going to have to pay for this in the end of the day and I think it's very important for companies that are resilient and can be resilient to 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 actually uh, provide money into the economy and, and and to pay the taxes because that is incredibly important and look uh, Fincher is a company that has unashamedly benefited from public uh, public money in creating creating these jobs. So, so I think it's very important that we give back when maybe the rest of the economy is is, is suffering. Um, but again, there there is a there's something special about Northern Ireland. But, but there there's something about the Northern Ireland psyche, the Northern Ireland ambition, the Northern Ireland desire to work hard, the Northern Ireland resilience, agility, able to pick up a laptop and work from from deepest darkest wherever they they, they work from. Or the and and with um you know consistently good internet uh, connectivity and I, and I think that kind of comes back to um, we, we all have stakeholders and clients who buy our services and um, and I think selling services from Northern Ireland has been has been um, significantly enhanced through this pandemic by everyone able to work from home because uh, we compete with with other companies who who maybe are in geographical locations that that just didn't have that resilience whether it be the individuals, or whether it be the the the, 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 the technology infrastructure, and um, so it's been a it's been a, rem, a remarkable. I'm not sure I would have asked for it, but but the fact that the uh, coronavirus has happened, I think we've all on this call, I think played our cards um, as well as we can, and I think we can be very grateful for the location we're based in. Thank you, Dara. Thank you, Keith. Um, if I come to you next, um, you obviously. AFLAC announced uh, they were coming to Northern Ireland in October last year, I think it was, somewhere somewhere around October. Uh, fast forward sort of three, five months later, and we're into a lockdown as you're in the midst of building your team. Um, what was that like? And I guess be keen to understand what, if anything, did you see in terms of the, um, the, the, the adaptability of Northern Irish people versus um, maybe some of the other teams in other geographies going remote? Yeah, much like everyone on the call said, uh, the pandemic was not in our 2020 business plan. We accidentally left that part out. Um, but, you know, after announcing in October, you know, one advantage that we had was come March, we were still relatively small and nimble and agile. So it was quite easy for us to take the, the 19 employees that we had. Everybody already had laptops. We were set up in a temporary office uh, anyway. So there was sort of a, a temporary feeling to, to our space. And, um, you know, everyone was brand new to the company. So those 19 people went home and that was that was pretty quick and easy to shift to, to remote work. I think since then what's happened is, you know, we've grown the company to now more than 60 people. So we, we've tripled in size in the period of time, which is ahead of the plan that we had. We thought we'd be at 50 by the end of this year, but we'll likely be closer to 70 by the end of this year. And that's just been, I think, a testament to the resilience of, of Northern Ireland um, and of, of Belfast in particular. And that that's one of the things that attracted us. You know, we, we have this this mural in our in our office, our new offices that we built, that says adaptable, uh, reinventive, and resilient. And COVID was a chance, I think, for Northern Ireland to prove that it, it can it can it can get past things, and people just want to get on with the work and get it done. I think for us, uh, you know, particularly, it was a great equalizer in the sense that we were a, a brand new offshoot of an American company, sitting here in Belfast with you know a bunch of folks we would work with in the states. Uh, where we wouldn't be around the water cooler, we wouldn't be in the meeting after the meeting, we weren't in the hallways and all of that. And, you know, a few months into our existence, everybody went home and everybody was on a screen and a webcam um, and, you know, shy of a, a little bit of a different accent. There was really no difference from working with someone in Belfast or in Columbus, Georgia or Atlanta, Georgia or anywhere else. So I think for us, the, the timing of it, it, it it really helped us merge into the company because everybody was in the same situation where they were all working from home. They were all juggling kids and dogs and, and all of those things, you know, and I think for us, it was a great equalizer. We've been very impressed with how quickly everybody just got on with it. Literally one day we had interviews set up um, and the next day we did those interviews remote. We just updated the calendar invite and said, we'll see you online. And, and that was it. So, you know, I think one, one benefit to, to everything that happened is it taught companies how quickly you can shift and you can plan things forever, but we all just learned how to react in 24, 48 hours. You know, we, we all made massive moves that uh, otherwise might've taken longer to do. So hopefully that's something we take out of this is that that, uh, that adaptability and that agility that we have as companies. Uh, and I think that Northern Ireland definitely proved it can, it can shift on a dime. 
Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if we can all build on this adaptability that that's come into, I guess, all our all our work and 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 really, I guess, take take the leap forward. Uh, Brian, if I could come back to you, uh, if you don't mind, but you know, Dara talked a lot there about um, you know not taking uh, the government support and furlough, etc. But you know, small small country, small place like Northern Ireland, what you know, how can how can somewhere like Northern Ireland support businesses to be more resilient in the future going forward? Is is there Anything that you've seen that 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 we should be doing more here? It, it's it's a good question, Steve. Um, like Dara, we didn't take any furlough or, or government funding either uh, because the business has been strong. But I think what has been really helpful to us is the investment in people. So we're running a number of academies now in conjunction with the Department of Education and the Higher Education Authorities. Um, and that is, uh, and I know a number of the other companies on, on the, the call also run very similar academies. And that's been hugely valuable in terms of creating a base of uh, capable, adaptable, flexible staff that will work with us and respond to any particular challenges that emerge. The second thing, and Dara alluded to it there, is the investment in technology infrastructure. So, you know, we're all sitting at home, 300 or 500 meg broadband, and we just take it for granted that everybody in Northern Ireland has access to that kind of technology. Uh, but when you're dealing with people, uh, not just in other parts of the world, but actually across the UK that might not have the same access, uh, you know, it was always important, but now it's critical. Uh, and being able to uh, to turn up reliably to uh, video calls with uh, both internally and with clients is absolutely critical. Uh, and I think uh, Invest Northern Ireland actually has been really instrumental in both those capability plays, whether it's helping us engage in dialogue with the education institutions to uh, run academies to um, make sure that people have the relevant skill sets for, for a new world uh, and face new challenges is really important part of resilience uh, and then just the infrastructure you know it, it used to be transport um, uh, increasingly in the future it's going to be technology infrastructure and again organizations like invest play a huge part in making sure that that investment is targeted on the things that will really help us as a business. Thanks, Brian. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. You know, the the fact that that Northern Ireland was was one of the first regions in Europe to have full broadband was is in our pitch deck, if you like, for selling Northern Ireland around the world. And was probably slide seven or eight uh, before the pandemic. It's now obviously an awful lot uh, closer to the top. So it's funny how how things change. But John, if I go to you, um, you know, Brian talked there about about the. the uh, people and, and, and the links and you know I know all of you on this call have links to universities and know in all state you sponsor an IT lab at, at, at McGee and, and Derry um, you know how, how important are those links that you can cultivate with universities here in Northern Ireland? It's all about the networks whenever you're thinking about doing business in, in Northern Ireland you know Brian talked about the importance of the physical infrastructure and the, and the digital infrastructure uh, but just as important uh, is the network of contacts that we have across business. You know, the fact that we can come on and share experiences in a webinar like this. Uh, even before we left the office way back in March, you know, we were picking the telephone up to each other, talking about, well, what's your plans? What are you doing? Sharing best practice. Uh, and that's just the way that the business is done with those connections. Uh, but those links that, that we have into the university are, are really important. Uh, and that's even whenever it's it's virtual. You take a company like Allstate, and uh, through this uh, pandemic, we have onboarded uh, about 150 people, and 50 of those are at the entry level, and that's across our apprenticeship programs, that's through the interns that we take on, as well as the, the graduates uh, coming out during the, during the summer. And you know, for those graduates, uh, graduating at a time of great uncertainty, uh, wondering whether or not there were going to be jobs for them coming out in the in the summer in the middle of a pandemic to be able to have those connections back into the university to be able to talk directly to uh, the, the tutors to the, the professors uh, and to the students themselves 
uh, and assure them that they were coming out and they were joining companies like Allstate that were really strong, that were still taking on talent, taking on uh, graduates like them to continue to build our, our businesses. You know, it's just truly amazing uh, to see that uh, you know, what's been able to be achieved by a company like Allstate and by, by others uh, here on the in the webinar today, uh, through the value of the links that we have through all those different uh, insta institutions, and it's a real strength of being able to do business in Northern Ireland that there are those links across business and uh, into the, the various different educational uh, establishments. And are you finding um, are you finding a lot of applicants for those those programs, John? Uh, from a from a and you know there's there's others in the call that you know Dara you know is is hiring these uh, graduates uh, by the by the class load uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you know so it's not just a, a business like like Allstate yeah the, you know the, the, there's good talent coming out of the, the universities out of the the uh, regional colleges in Northern Ireland and coming in the case of the apprenticeship programs that are becoming a bigger part of how we bring entry-level talent into our business directly from from schools uh, and that's a, a great place for us to, to to find ourselves and you know the confidence uh, you've heard from several of the businesses around you know the, the, the business confidence they not needing to take any of the, the help or assistance from from government that's a really strong message to be able to give to somebody as they start their career to say you know when you're hearing about uh, all of the turmoil that's out there uh, in the in the economy and uh, businesses that are in distress and, and having to take uh, help and assistance from whatever quarter. Here are a set of businesses that actually are trading really strongly through this pandemic because the, the product, the services that, that they're offering uh, from here in Northern Ireland are world-class uh, and in high demand. Dara, I'll go to you next if you don't mind. Uh, so yes, we see lots of Fintrue Academies being advertised. You're still scaling, still growing fast. You you still getting the number of, of applicants onto those academies? Yeah, so we, we have we have ran eight academies in 2020, which is which is our, our, our biggest ever. Um the the number of applicants is probably 10 to 15 for every place which which if i'm honest i think is 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 just socially wrong you know in just you know it's just too many and um, before the pandemic it probably was more five to six per place so so i think there's an awful lot of supply of wonderful talent you know kind of graduates who, who are looking for opportunities look there 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 is um there is a lot of people coming out of universities looking for opportunities um and i think it's incumbent on on all of us as companies here to try and create as many opportunities as we can for those people. And um, similarly, uh, apprenticeships is not something we would have taken historically. You know, I think we have uh, we've taken half the fintech class from UU this year. So, so, and again, I think it's important that that's the first fintech uh, program done in the United Kingdom. And I'm delighted that I think that's in, in Northern Ireland. And um, but I think interestingly, um, not only at the availability of kind of entry level talent. Um, and I know that Brian and John and Keith and James have also been hiring more experienced talent. I think there's a there's a great opportunity for us to attract Northern Ireland diaspora or related to Northern Ireland diaspora. So they have a family reason that maybe they would like to be in Northern Ireland, but but before they they you know their their career was in London or San Francisco or New York or wherever. And um, you know you know has there ever actually been a better time to live in a city that doesn't have a subway or a metro system? There probably never has been. So actually. We should use that to our benefit. And um, you know, we we um, uh, Fintra expanded into Derry, London, Derry in the northwest a couple of years ago. And um, you know, Derry, London, Derry is the only city in Europe that can expand in an environmentally sustainable fashion. And that's a pretty cool fact to get out there. So so if if you are looking to expand and have a location, and, and again, I would strongly encourage um, maybe any companies or, or potential investors in Northern Ireland to look at it. There's also no, I think, a real opportunity to invest outside of Belfast, you know, in Northern Ireland, because if you're going to work remotely anyway, go actually where the employees want to be. And if they all want to be, you know, surfing in Donegal or, or you know, walking the, 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 the North Coast or doing whatever they want to do and enjoying the beautiful nature that, that uh, Northern Ireland has to offer, you can provide opportunities for them in, in locations and cities that are environmentally sustainable. And I mean, that's a, that's a wonderful feather to put in, in someone's cap today of, of being able to provide that. Um, but it, it's um, but but there, kind of coming back to the point about 
a diaspora want to come home. There's an awful lot of people now I think would like to come home and, and just never thought the level of, of professional opportunity existed in Northern Ireland. I think all the companies on, on this call today and can provide that, that level of experience and opportunity for those people. So I think as well, we'd love for any anybody who, who you know, has that experience and, and would like to move back to Northern Ireland. I'm sure all our companies would love to, to, to chat to them and, and provide them opportunities and update them that there's also kind of the senior opportunities available here as well. I think Dara, if I could just add on to uh, the diaspora point, uh, you know, I think there's great opportunity for Northern Ireland as a whole. You picked on Derry where you've got a, an operation and we've got an operation up there as well. And Derry came out number four in the UK on the remote working index, uh, just in terms of its desirability, uh, you know, in terms of the quality of, of life there, the cost of living there, the access to beaches, mountains, uh, and uh, you know, just in terms of the, the all-in package, uh, and that is a really strong uh, selling point for for Northern Ireland as a as a whole in terms of what we've got to uh, offer to to employees. Uh, I think that uh, it'll be a real story for uh, next year whenever we come out of this pandemic around people wanting to come back uh, and live here, having had uh, the successful first part of their careers in in, in London, New York, or or wheresoever. I think I'll be a big part of our story for next year. Yeah. Brian, James, anything you want to add to that? Do you seeing the same? Um, just, just. Um, I think like everyone else, the the quality of the um, of the, the people in Northern Ireland, the, the the teams that we've been able to recruit is just, uh, it's it's great actually. And I think when you when you look at the size of the population in Northern Ireland and the and and look at the the, the wealth of educational establishments that there are, to have two. Um, such strong universities uh, locally is a it's it's a real strength. Uh, we were talking earlier about infrastructure, and I think that the, the physical hard infrastructure is has clearly been critical for us. Um, but 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 having that that kind of educational infrastructure um, is it, frankly is the, re the reason we're here in the first place. Is 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 that really strong talent pool uh, that's available? Um, just the, the the other thing to pick up a bit, again a bit around there. We, we we've all spoken about. Uh, fortunately, not needing to have drawn on the support, the financial support that's been offered um, to to organisations in the pandemic, and um, I, we we haven't either. But I, but I'm glad, I'm glad it's there um, because, because as um, um, I think Brian said, that we've we're all um, all of our team members work, work, they're, they're all in extended families, um, and they work better. People are happier know, knowing that uh, that there is a that there is a um, uh, that there is support out there for the organisations that their loved loved ones and friends and relatives work for. So it's it's good to work somewhere uh, that, that prioritises looking after the well-being and the employment prospects of um, of people and puts that as a very high high priority. So we haven't had to draw on it, but I'm very glad it's there. Thank you, Keith. Coming back to you. Um, so you know we've we've heard a lot about the ecosystems that there are here, and I know you have links with the universities as well, but. In terms of um, being a new investor in the Northern Ireland and, and coming in fresh, how have you found being able to to settle the business down in Northern Ireland and get into that ecosystem? Have you found it useful? Yeah, we have. You know, I'll, I'll say one thing is, uh, you know, for the folks on this call, there is a real community, uh, especially around the, the fintech world here in Northern Ireland, but even broader of the companies. And as John said, you know, when when we were all in February, March and trying to figure out what, what we were going to do and what the plans were and how we should react, you know, you got to see the community come together. And that's one of my, my favorite things about Northern Ireland is it's it's a small enough place that everybody knows everybody or knows somebody that knows everybody and there's connectivity throughout. But it's a big enough place that if we all pull in the same direction, you know, we can make a big difference. And seeing, you know, folks that would otherwise be seen as as my competitors or I would be a competitive threat to their businesses coming in. Uh, just wrap around and say, look, let's figure this out together. How are we going to get through this? What are you guys doing? What are we doing? Sort of comparing notes to make sure that it's all really about Northern Ireland PLC in this in this manner. Um, that's been something that I've seen and been very impressed with is how the businesses work together. A lot of that credit would go to Invest Northern Ireland because you introduced a lot of us, you know, and then the first folks that I met here were the, you know, some of the folks on this call that, that would be uh, welcoming us into town. So definitely from from that side, you know, I think also to the point about the the funding that was available through through different government entities. Um, you know, for us personally, it was a wonderful opportunity, not only by not taking the funding, but also what what we could do with our employees to show the community and the employees early on what kind of company we are and how we operate. It's it's rare that you get a chance to 
to prove yourself so early on to your existence about how you value employees and how you you know value their their health and their wellness and their families. So you know I look at it as it was a great opportunity for us to quickly show as a brand new company in town what kind of company we are and have a you know a pandemic as a backdrop to say listen let's talk about what's really important here uh, and let's focus on those things that are really important first. So all in all I think that that uh, it's another silver lining coming out of it. But I really appreciate how. The whole community has come together to help each other out. And as Dara said, everybody knows people that are not in the same situation that we're in, that are not as lucky to, to be mobile as we are mobile. And, and I think you see that, you know, throughout the community as well. And it's just really good to see everyone sort of trying to, trying to bring Northern Ireland up together and make sure that we all get through this. Yeah, okay. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Just before we go, I'm going to ask each of you one question. If you could give me one strength of Northern Ireland that, that, uh, that makes it so good about about um, locating your businesses here. So Brian, I'll start with you first, if that's okay. Um, I, I would say we'll all have a very similar list, and it's just a question of picking which one is most important. So uh, you know, I'll start with the obvious one, which is the quality of talent. Um, you know, I think that's why we're all here. Uh, the the great historically uh, flow of grads coming into the market. But increasingly, as we all broaden the, to, to look at other aspects of the labour pool, I think we've all been delighted with what we have found as we have tried different recruitment channels, whether they be higher apprenticeships or whether they be academies. Um, it, it's really the quality of talent. And I think that shows through now in their resilience. And as we work collaboratively in the case of PwC with projects across the UK, uh, the quality of our staff can hold their own uh, against any other parts of the UK comfortably and have seen the same thing in other organisations globally. So I picked the easy one. Uh, <laughs> you can you, you can choose the next one from the list. Will do. Uh, Dara, I'll go to you next. Uh, so, so clearly it has to be, it, look, it, it clearly has to be uh, the people, as Brian said, but Brian obviously got the, got, got the easy answer. Um, I would say it's the it's the it's 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 the passion. There there's there's and, and that's a that's a, a countrywide passion. There's just something there's something about this place that just makes it special. And maybe it's the air, maybe it's the sea air, I don't know, right? There there's something there's something about it that just makes it a very unique place. And so maybe it's uniqueness, it's passion. Um, if you could bottle it, you'd sell it for millions of dollars and you know in America. Um, I'm sure that they've tried it with, with whiskey for many years, so maybe it's the, the that's that's the ultimate raw ingredient of the of the Northern Ireland success story. It's maybe that it goes into the whiskey. So that's a very convoluted way of of trying to trying to add on to what Brian said about people. Um, but it's it's the quality that makes the people special. That, that means double coming from a court man, Dara. That's wonderful to hear. I have to say, <laughs> uh, John, we'll go to you next. Yeah, I would say it is the positive can-do attitude of our employees. You know, and we saw that as we left the office to to work from home for the, for the pandemic. It's the the yes, we can do it uh, in terms of making a two and a half thousand person business function from our homes. Uh, it is the the can-do attitude of continuing to grow, uh, develop our businesses, onboard people into our business. Uh, the, the can-do attitude in terms of you know this isn't over but we're going to continue working hard to make it work for the employees for the company uh, and for the communities in which we we operate you know so if you could bottle it uh, I think it's that positive can-do spirit of the of the employee base that, that that we have. Thank you, James. Well, I guess it's building on the the people observations, which are you know clearly is the. Uh, the, the the biggest thing for all of us it's the for me it's the welcome now wh whether that's welcoming somebody not from northern ireland um into a new role as as i benefited from a few years ago or just welcoming new ideas new ways of doing things opportunities to learn to develop um it's been it's been really great i mean the, the way in which brand belfast has 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 really acquired a strong very strong meaning within bacon mckenzie i mean even even when we were 
you know, 50 people in an organization of 13,000 globally, where Belfast actually just became a byword for, you know, that, that's the way you do. I mean, we, we, we support the rest of the law firm. We're not, not a practicing office, but it's, well, can you do it like Belfast did it? Well, Belfast does it right. You know, we, we got that branding very early on. And if there's one thing I lose sleep over, it's losing that because it's that uh, conflation of Belfast and quality. Um, and that to me is it is all down to the people and it's the it's the welcoming of new ways of doing things and being willing to people to put, put new ideas forward and, and, and you know stand shoulder to shoulder with um, the, the, rest, the rest of our team around the world. Yeah, that's really interesting. Thank you, James. Keith, you are almost in, in the space of a year becoming an honorary Northern Irishman. You know, we see you uh, all over social media. What, what is it about this place that you that you uh, that clicks with you? Well, the joy of getting to go last uh, and everyone taking all of the great comments. So the only thing I think I could add would be that there's a, there's a grit here. Um, there's something to prove, you know, and that I think that there's something, you know, there's a feeling here that we can do just as good as London. We can do just as good as Dublin. We can do just as good as New York, if not better, just give us a chance. And having that real desire and that grit, no fear of hard work, you know, in an engineering town um, that is used to just rolling up sleeves and getting stuff done. Um, I think that's really shown during the pandemic as well. So that would probably be the most attractive part for me is that there's every employee here has a desire to show that Belfast can do what anyone else can do and uh, continue to make the place, you know, grow and make it better and better. Thank you, Keith. Um, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate you taking uh, time out your busy schedules to, to share those, uh, those thoughts with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's all. You're very welcome. Thank you very much.